My name is Venega and this is Slayer Drop Locked. The idea is simple, I'm only allowed to use items obtained by killing monsters on a Slayer task. This also means I cannot trade with any shops or pick up item spawns. For a full list of the rules, check out the description of the video. Are you ready? Let's begin! Welcome everyone to the third episode of Slayer Drop Locked. In the past few days, I've gained over 5,000 new subscribers on my channel, which is absolutely mental. Thank you guys so much for supporting the series. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then make sure to do so, because there's going to be a lot of content in the upcoming weeks. But anyway, that's enough talking now, let's get into the episode. Here we go, level 51 strength. This means that in 9 more levels, I can access the Wilderness God Wars dungeon. Very exciting. Alright then, so the bear's task was finally completed and I went back to Veneca for my next task and this time I got cave slimes once again. Not the best task, but it'll do. I was so close. Well, what do we have here? I smell an armor upgrade. Wow. So even though I thought this wasn't the best task, I still got an armor upgrade and then it's always worth it on this account, so that was very nice. And then I went back to Venica for a new task. I got Pyre Fiends and I don't really want to touch these guys anymore until I have protection prayers because flinching them is very, very painful. So I got a Lizard's task from Durell and I thought it was very special that these guys dropped an Emerald and Sapphire in the same drop, but this turned out to be something very normal from these guys. Lizards completed, so I went back to Venica but got Pyre Fiends again, so nope. And that means we had to go back to Turrell once again and got Cave Slimes. Wow, this is really bad luck right now. Got a Prison Pete random event and got 4 uncut rubies. Well, this may come in handy in the future. Once again, I got surprised by the Cave Slimes. You got an Oil Lantern. That's actually better than a candle, but I can't use it yet because I still have to put the oil in it and stuff like that. Okay, so this is the moment where I'm gonna have to prepare you guys mentally for what is about to come. Because this is something I've never mentioned in this series before. But there is actually one task and I call it the task of death. And this task of death is... Cave Crawlers. If you guys don't know this creature, this is basically a creature that poisons up to 8 and regenerates 1 HP every second. And I also can't skip the task because Tural assigns it too. So this means a huge grind is about to come. What you have to keep in mind is that this is a Slayer Drop Locked account, which means I can't trade with any shops and I can't pick up item spawns, so I have no access to anti-poison. Now I do actually have one anti-poison that I got from the Dr. Jekyll random event in the previous episode, but I think that in this situation it's not going to make much of a difference. So my strategy for killing these cave crawlers was very simple, but at the same time also incredibly painful. I was usually only capable of doing one kill per trip, which means that after every death I had to run back from Lumbridge through the entire cave again without a light source to do another kill. Now to make the task slightly easier, I used the same trick that I used to kill the Pyre Fiends in the previous episode. I would look for the aggro range of the cave crawler and try to flinch it this way. So if I was lucky, then I could do a kill without being poisoned and then it's actually possible to kill multiple cave crawlers per trip. So yes, this is actually the task of death, quite literally. But are there any positives? Well, I think so, because cave crawlers drop a lot of herblore ingredients such as vials of water, but also secondary ingredients such as snake grass, white berries, but also unicorn dust for anti-poison. So by killing these cave crawlers, I can train my herblore a bit more. Well, there we go, level 38 slayer. I can now kill fires. These would have been useful if I did not get the iron boots from the cave slimes before. I also started training my attack because I needed to be as accurate as possible to increase my chance of killing multiple cave crawlers per trip. I even got a herblore level all from the ingredients I got from the cave crawlers. And at the very end of the task I was really teased by the game because I was working on my last cave crawler kill and then I suddenly got a strange plant random event. Now if you pick the fruit from this plant it will cure your poison. But I was not in time to pick the fruit, so I died in front of the plant and my last cave crawler kill. That was awful. But oh well, I went back to the cave crawlers to actually finish my task for real this time. And then I went to Venica again for the new task. And this time I got 64 lizards. I got level 30 attack, so if I can get my hands on an adamant weapon, then it's going to be a huge upgrade for my account. Okay. 
So if I get 44 rune crafting, I can make my own nature runes as long as I get the pure essence from Slayer Drops, but that is so interesting. After finishing the lizards, I got an Anku task, but I tried this in the previous episode and I could not land a single hit, so this is just too hard for me at the moment. I will do this later. So what does Dural have for me this time? 24 dwarves, my friends. Now that is the task I was looking for. Dwarves have a chance of dropping a bronze pickaxe and should I be able to obtain this item then I will have a pickaxe, axe and fishing net which means I can train all my gathering skills. After 7 kills only, the dream became reality. I got myself the bronze pickaxe drop that I was hoping for. So now that I'm able to mine rocks, chop wood and catch fish, I think it's time to explain how this actually works in the series. What is allowed and what is not because I've seen in the comments that for a lot of people this is still quite unclear, like am I allowed to keep my resources or can't I do that, like how does this work? Alright, so I'm gonna try to explain what exactly we can do and what we cannot do. So the original rules of the series are that I can only use items that are obtained with the Slayer skill. So this means I can actually use my axe, pickaxe and fishing net, but what about the resources I get with it? Well, I looked into this and I came to the conclusion that it would be way too overpowered if I would allow myself to collect resources infinitely. So that is why I've decided to only allow myself to train experience and not collect the resources that I get from it. I mean, think about it. I could use my pickaxe to mine infinite rune essence or mine infinite ores to make bars and make range ammunition. This way I will never really need a slayer drop anymore because I can simply make this stuff my own infinitely but you don't have to worry about not being able to collect these items at all because there are alternatives my friends. I can still obtain logs according to the rules if I get a end task for example in the wilderness or grow my own farming tree and chop down this tree. And the same goes for mining and fishing, if I can find a way through Slayer to obtain these items then I can freely do that but I just can't go to a mining or fishing spot and grab these resources as much as I want. So if this is still unclear to you or if I made a mistake somewhere then please let me know in the comments because this will really help me to make it a better series. Alright so after the dwarves I came up with a new idea to get myself a hill giant task from Venica and every time I would not get this task I would skip it, go back to Tyrell and then try it again. So I got a task of 84 rock slugs, which is quite interesting, but I decided to not do it because I wanted to get this hill giant task. So I went to TRL to skip it and I got scorpions. Now this creature doesn't drop too many good stuff, but you know, it's an easy task and that counts for me. My next task is now lizards. And there is level 39 slayer. Holy shit, mystic gloves, that is amazing. I can't wait to get level 40 magic. Just look at the chat. I actually got a woodcutting level by cutting the cactus, wow. As you can see I got loads of ores in my inventory so this is actually a good way to train my smithing. No thank you. So I got another dwarf task and this time I decided to kill the black dwarf guards because these actually have a chance of dropping a bucket and if I can get this bucket I can complete priest imperial and get access to Mauritania, that is so exciting. The Quizmaster random event is one of the coolest one there is because there are so many chances of getting a good item from the mystery box. For example an onion to complete goblin diplomacy, or a mithril scimitar, or also a bucket, yeah that is an actual option. And I got a diamond, that is not bad I guess. Well look at that, 53 strength, cool. So I completed my dwarf task, I did not get the bucket but I did receive quite a lot of bronze bars so I will use this soon to train some smithing so I can make knives for rage training. Oh yes baby, 92 hill giants, that is so many big bones and a chance on a weapon upgrade. The hill giants on the desert plateau have a slightly different drop table from the regular ones and these guys actually drop a steel scimitar, now that would be a huge upgrade compared to my steel dagger right now so let's pray for this drop. First kill, limpert root, that is not too bad for herblore training. I got the Prison Pete random event and this time I got 3 uncut diamonds. A body talisman, well that is interesting. Level 40 Slayer. I got a beginner clue scroll and this is painful because I actually had one of the two items that I needed. I had a bronze axe but no leather boots unfortunately. Different clue, same story. And then I got another clue of which I could do the first step but after that unfortunately I got a Charlie clue. So once again I used the very same trick to kill the giants because they are still way too strong for me to you know keep tanking them all the time. Bam! 54 strength. Oh my goodness. 
Only one kill to go and I got the Steel Scimitar. Well, that is a huge difference compared to the Steel Dagger. We are finally getting somewhere, guys. This is actually a decent weapon. Okay, so I finally get a good weapon and this is how you reward me. Thank you very much, Terrell. Thanks to the Steel Scimitar, this actually wasn't that bad. Oh man, finally the task is done. Veneca, please. Why always ogres? 41 goblins, that means we get another chance of getting a red cape for the clue requirement that is always welcome. So many clues, but also so many requirements. I can't do them. Oh man. So that task is now also completed and it's time to go to Veneca again. When you are watching this video, can you please realize the fact that you don't have to do all this? Well, wish me good luck. I just got myself a meat pie. Now the pie isn't what is special, but the pie dish is. I got a ground unicorn dust, so I can make one anti-poison. Nice. Once again using the flinch method and got level 41 slayer. And there is level 55 strength, only 5 more levels until the wilderness Gold wars dungeon. Such a genius random event. And here is level 7 herb lore. So during this task I was reading through the wiki and I discovered that I can actually train my smithing without the need of ores because I can use my hammer at the mother of mine to repair the broken struts. And this is actually amazing because it's not against the rules, I'm not obtaining any resources from it, but I can skip the low smithing levels so I don't have to waste my bronze bars on items that I don't need. And this is perfect because this means every single bar that I got from Slayer so far can be used on something useful instead of an item that I don't want to make. Ah. Time for a fresh new task at Veneca. I got Kelfight, which is not the best, but with my Steel Scimitar I can face anything. Very nice, a hard leather body. I do need 10 range for this, but that's no problem. I can make bronze knives with my bars now. It doesn't matter what I unlock, but every Slayer level feels like a huge victory to me. I also got another hit points level to 46, which is not bad at all. So I completed my Kelfight task and this time I got Hobgoblins from Veneca. And I don't really like this task that much, but it's actually quite nice because they drop bones and I was getting very close to 43 prayer for protect from melee. I decided to not use my scimitar here because the Hobgoblins have many drops that will protect over my scimitar and I really don't want to lose it. Right in the middle of my task I decided to take a break from the Hobgoblins and use my bones on the Chaos Altar because according to my calculations this would be enough to reach level 43 and that is incredibly exciting. After a couple of inventories I got level 40 prayer already and that means protect from missiles, awesome. But then unfortunately I got killed and that kinda sucks because I really needed these bones to get level 43 prayer. So I ended up with 616 XP left until 43 and in order to solve this problem I decided to not go and collect more bones but to complete a quest, Restless Ghost. This quest has no item requirements except for the Ghost Speak amulet but you obtain it during the quest and it's also a quest specific item and then it's always allowed. From this moment and on the account will never be the same since we can protect ourselves from all incoming attacks, magic, ranged and melee. This will eliminate the need of food for almost every task and I also have a chance to prayer flick way stronger monsters now to get better loots. But we have now come to an end of the video so make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because the next episode is going to be incredible. With the 43 prayer that we have now our potential is limitless. We can do almost any slayer task so hopefully we can get some great drops next time. Thank you all very much for watching and until next time bye bye.